From the air, our protected reserves seem to form a vast green network of ecosystems. But appearances can be deceptive. If you look more closely, you will find there are many gaps between the reserves. From the Otford Stanwell Tops Corridor in the north, the Sandon Point Corridor halfway down, to the Calderwood Corridor at the southern tip of the escarpment. These are the lifelines that link the reserves together, serving as wildlife corridors and nurseries to restock the reserves in the wake of major fires and urban impact. And yet, somehow, they remain unprotected, vulnerable to urban sprawl and industrial development. Thankfully, a number of dedicated community groups and hard-working individuals are doing everything possible to secure the future of these green corridors. Let's meet some of these heroes. Firstly, in the scenic township of Otford, gateway to Royal National Park. I'm Natasha Watson. I've been living in Otford since 1998, an active member of WIRES, which is the Wildlife Information Rescue Service, primarily rescuing fostering wildlife, and also an active member of the Otford Protection Society Incorporated, which is just a, a community group um, established to help conserve the area and the lifestyle and the beautiful bushland that surrounds us for the, not only Otford, but Helensburg and Lilyvale and Stanwell Tops as well. The Otford Valley is probably reasonably unique, I guess, in this part of the world, perhaps in the whole of New South Wales, due to the having National Park and Gowarra and the other state conservation areas buffering it. Uh, people who do visit down this area are often just absolutely amazed by the creatures that we almost take for granted that come and visit from the king parrots to um, swamp wallabies, uh, sugar gliders, um, the uh, brush tail possum, uh, ring tail possums and beautiful birds like lyrebirds that regularly come down to the river to drink. It is essential to the National Park and the conservation areas around us that I guess we can keep it like a nursery. Um, every time those areas are touched by bushfire there's basically nothing left of them. Um, it's, it's up to this particular area that repopulates those. to see uh, for the Otford Helensburg area in the Lillivale I guess um, we must stop the frag further fragmentation I suppose and we need to protect the link from the National Royal National Park and Garawara and um, Warranora and behind us the Illawarra Escarpment which is also known as the Illawarra Escarpment State Conservation Area. This is the link in between. That link needs to be protected, needs to be improved not only for um, conservation but also for tourism, um, for our wildlife for our fresh air and just the green habitat corridor. My name is June Pronk and I represent the Illawarra Escarpment Coalition. We're standing on Mount Kira with uh, Mount Kembla behind and Mount Nebo down lower. The Illawarra Escarpment Coalition began in 1990 because of major problems associated for many years with overdevelopment on the escarpment. It began particularly in 1990 because of land below the lookout here, Gipps Road, Mount Kira. It, it, that land links uh, the escarpment park with Kiraville below. It's a green corridor uh, with right, a couple of creek lines, a lovely young regrowth rainforest. People thought it was already part of the Scotland Park. It turned out to be mine land ripe for development. We had a meeting on Mount Kira at Barong Park just below us and from that the Escarpment Coalition was formed. It consisted of people from Helensburg to West Dapto who had issues the length of the escarpment, created by clearing, overdevelopment and council's policies on the escarpment. The coalition's major objective is 
the protection of a wildlife corridor, a major green corridor from Royal, the Royal National Park in the north to the Morton National Park in the south, plus protection of the east-west corridors along the creek lines from the escarpment down into the floodplain below and over into the Warrenora Plateau behind. Councillors, politicians and planners have not done a lot to protect it. The escarpment has been the concern of community. People that know it, that love it, that have often known it since childhood. They have come together with the coalition and we've worked endlessly to try and draw awareness to what was happening, to draw awareness in the community as well as with politicians and planners. The only way to rekindle the, the issues and to force planners and politicians to do something now when they have all this material available is if the community itself, the wider community, not just the people that belong to the coalition or national parks or some other really um, community conscious, environmentally conscious organisation, but ordinary people look at their politicians and say, who am I voting for? What do they stand for? And to know them before they go to the election and to vote for those who will protect not only their quality of life, but protect the the environment on which they depend. Because unless we look after the environment, we're lost. While the state conservation areas and our water catchments have fragile connections to Royal National Park, urban development is fragmenting these links between the reserves. The future challenge of governments and communities is to maintain these green corridors. Royal National Park and the surrounding reserves cannot remain viable in the long term without tapping into creative management approaches. And without vigorous protection, these essential green corridors may vanish like a zephyr of wind. Hardly noticed, gone in a breath. Thank you.